delayed, we're delayed. I just killed Tinzer, guys. <laughs> yup, the enemy clove is Tins. I am a Radiant Valor player, and I've been playing since basically the release of the game. Whenever I first started, I was iron, and it took me about like one entire year of just consistently playing to get to Immortal. And I was hard stuck Immortal 3 for like six months, and then I finally peaked Radiant, and that's whenever I was consistently Radiant ac every act f after that. That's awesome. Congratulations in one year. That's usually what I expect anyone to like that kind of range to be able to get to that point. Yeah. How many hours did you put in? I'm curious. Do you have your tracker by any chance? Okay, so uh, my main account, I've played on it since release, and I played about 4,000 hours. 4,000 hours, yeah. Okay, that sounds about right. <laughs> what sort of yeah. things do you feel you struggle with being at this level now, and, and what do you want to get to next in terms of your goals? I feel like my game sense is pretty strong. I know what I'm doing. Um, I understand how the game should be played and how it works. My weaknesses would probably be uh, uh, how to outplay like other players and like aiming wise. I uh, yep. I just killed tens there, guys. <laughs> yep. The enemy clove is tens. Um, sorry, you were saying. I probably struggle to find my weaknesses. Like I, I feel like I lose my gunfight sometime maybe like i don't know i just like i always switch my sense like i'm either going high sense or low sense mm. every couple days to like every couple weeks why do you do that what's the reason for that what do you think i change my sense like i don't change it a lot i just change it like whenever i feel like i'm doing bad like whenever i play high sense i feel like my micromanaging is like very bad like right. i can i can flick everywhere and, and i could get 180 kills i can look away from flashes really easily in exchange for that uh i just can't micro uh, micro aim it's very difficult for me how many sensitivities are you playing on do you have like set sensitivities that you're playing on right now i play with three different senses one i'm on like duelist playing like something i need to like just entry and look look around while i dash in Right. I play 0.175 and whenever I like I'm just not feeling that sense it's like feeling too fast I play on 0.16 whenever I'm playing on like X agents non duelist where I don't need to go in and look everywhere I play 0.115 that is the sense that I'm playing right now I was gonna say a lot of that kind of stuff there's a lot of people that will try to find anything to like justify why they've missed a shot or something like that I'm not saying that's you but I'm just saying like a lot of people will look at like DPI 1600 sort of things like oh it's like this it's like this small little thing that will better reactivity in the mouse and all that stuff but a lot of them too I believe it, it could be pilot error human beings don't like being wrong so I would just be very careful with that kind of stuff three sensitivities is very interesting for me why not one why not just stick to one well I've been sticking to 0.16 for a while okay and I just feel like don't like I, I aim train and it's just uh my micro like micro aiming is just bad mm -hmm. and so, you're sticking with it like fully like how long you've been sticking with it now uh i'd say about six months to a year okay cool so you've point, been point one six. Point, point one six this whole time okay cool i love that i want you to just stick with that ride it out because consistency is bred on the things that you can control if I'm going to advise you on anything, I'd recommend find one that's going to have the best of all worlds and be consistent with it. You'll look at people like Tens, for example, and they're constantly changing things, right? Half that battle is mental. A lot of the times they're trying to find one thing to adjust because they're like, this is the reason why I'm falling apart. But the goal here more than anything is, is consistency. Would you agree or disagree? I, dis I agree. You agree? Agree. you agree with consistency? Okay, cool. Yes. So if you want to be consistent in anything in life, you need to have consistent practices, right? This is something that, not just me saying this, this is a lot of high level pros will say that too. You want to have something that's going to be consistent for a while. Now, you being as skilled as you are, you have a high level of adaptation. You're probably able to take a new sensitivity and learn it within a couple of minutes and be decent with it. That being said, you still want to control all the elements that can be consistent. For example, your height on your chair. You want that to be consistent every time. Where you place your arm on the table, you want that to be consistent every time. The lighting in your room, consistent. How much you sleep at night, consistent. How well you eat, how well you work out. All these things need to be consistent. It needs to be habit, right? Because when you build consistency, you're able to get consistent results. It's that simple, right? So you can do, you can go for you can go for the different sensitivities. If that works for you, I'm not going to change everything because you found success with it, right? That's not my job here today. 
My job here is to give you as many options as possible, as many tools as you can to, to get here so you can change or add different principles to how you play, right? To get better results. That's all I'm looking for today. Does that sound fair enough? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna break down one round at a time where I think you could have some improvement on certain areas. And again, it's all about tools, right? The way that I think of things might be different the way that you think about things. But if you add some of these uh, processes or protocols to your mind, it might improve you over time, okay? So let's look at how we break down every single round. Okay, so we're gonna go one round at a time here. Let's start off, what's your job in this comp? Create space. Yeah, you're an entry duelist, right? You're creating space, you're the entry. The drone typically is entry actually over you because they're gonna be leading in, but depending on what they end up buying and what path you guys choose, there's a whole bunch of things. I love that you bought this. So many of my students won't buy for a purpose, so pay attention, chat. This is clearly purposeful, and the pathing is going to reflect how we use this gun. There's one tree right now. Tell I'm stuck in it. Hey man, hey man, hey man, close, like, he's on the choke. Reloading. We're delayed, we're delayed. This right here is perfect. So our buy here was to go with an updraft, cloud burst, and to go with a frenzy. Frenzy going to be guaranteeing close range fights. So our whole intention here as a jet is to create space, but to get up close to them. That's what we're trying to do. So a smoke's been thrown. We can't see the minimap here, but the smoke's been thrown directly in front of them. This is our clove smoke. And now we're dashing across, which creates space for our teammates to move in. Whenever we're dashing across, our intention is to one, create space, but also to draw crosshairs. Okay, we're trying to draw crosshairs towards us because what happens in this game is something that you can totally abuse it in, is that we suffer as Valorant players from a syndrome called <laughs> cat protocol. Do you have a cat at home by any chance? I do, I do. Okay, awesome. You ever shown a laser at a wall near your cat? Like yeah. a laser pointer? What happens to the cat? It looks at it. Yeah, looks at it and sometimes it goes right after it, right? Well, here's what Valorant players do. When they see an opportunity, especially in ranked, for a frag and they see you dashing across, they're going to chase you like a laser. So you're drawing attention, which creates space and allows your team to set up for a trade, which is exactly what happened here. This person was standing, I believe, right here and Crickor was able to get a free kill, okay? So you can use this as a duelist like you're doing right now. You might have just been doing it unconsciously right now, but now you're conscious of it and how you can like take it, advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. let's watch your pathing here. One, 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 full heal, careful. This is not your job. I love that you're kind of like, help me, help me. you're kind of letting everyone else do it, which is great. He's lit, 130. Yeah, it's not your job. Perfect. This is so good. This is so good that you're doing this stuff. I'm because not doing, I'm not going there. I'm open to heaven if I try to help him. You got it. Exactly. You, you can't do it. It's up to Sova. It's up to Reyna right now to deal with that. You cannot yep. extend past. And so many players will do this. Too. Exactly. I have a frenzy. Exactly. And this is the difference between, like you know, Immortal and Radiant, really. You're thinking about the pathing that you can take right now and where the effective range of this gun is. The one hole that I would say is that you pulled your knife out here. I'm not sure what you see on the mini map or where everyone is right now. So I'm a little bit concerned someone might just full send into you while you're doing that. But that's about it. I can't really tell yeah. because I don't know the mini map right now. All I know is that you killed two on A. Now, depending on how early 10's called for a rotation, um, would be based on the timing of where this, yeah. this person will be coming. Okay, so there were three on A, so I'm assuming that there was one towards middle and one towards B. So we're looking at a rotation um, that's a little bit delayed. Oh, uh. some oh, on so. You probably thought he was dead at this point, right? <laughs> I thought he was dead because oh, uh. it seemed like he just stopped shooting. So great pathing. Great thought process. So all the mechanics that you've been talking about in terms of your entry as a duelist is fantastic. Now you're normally playing Sentinel, you said. Sentinel controller, is that right? In scrims? Um, in, in ranked, I have a lot of duelist experience. Mm -hmm. And in scrims, like team play, I have a lot of Sentinel experience. So it's like a complete opposite role. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand each role and know how to play each role. That's so important too, because when you're playing Sentinel, you need to know how a duelist thinks so that you're able to adapt to it. Well, I've got dash on the site. I think I remember this one. You're gonna dash right in. Yeah, use the site. You're gonna dash in the site. Again, chat, pay attention. 
They're calling out their actions, what they're doing ahead of time, right? Okay, so what do you think about this dash, considering what you know? Well, first question for you is where does that dart come from? Lane. Yeah, it's coming from sight and lane. Think about the gun that you have. Now, you've already planned that you want to dash into sight and go for it. Yeah. The likelihood of them having a gun that's going to beat you while you're midair is very, very, very high. So this is where you might need to modify where you're going to path into. This pathing works best when you know there's one person on site. So you might have made a read that there was a 113 at some point, which we kind of did. But now with the Sova being here and a chance of a KJ being there, we're looking at two on site right now. So right away, you need to consider changing things once you see that turret we just saw there. Okay, so this is like on the fly. This is like a small, small mistake that you might have had. You Cloudburst to dodge this, which is great. Great reaction, love this. But now in my head, I'm thinking, shit, there's two on site right now. Where do I need to dash to make this work? And this right here would be the least likely spot that I'd want to go into just because of all that stuff, all right? And you think about how much more distanced you are from your team now because of that. Think about what happened on B main. It's all mollied off. So you taking the space right now will net you zero value okay. because of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So it's a split second decision. It is. And that's what you're looking at with Radiant, man. When you're looking at Radiant, you're looking at the smallest mistakes, the smallest ones. You play yeah. this in gold, you kill everyone. They don't even shoot at you. You know what I mean? But like yeah. in this rank, because they've positioned that way, they're now oh able to counter you on that kind of play. Now, another way to think about this too, is that there's no need to run in instantaneously to do this because you have a minute and 34, which a lot of players, especially the ones that like came up from ranked, have this idea that we have to get on site within like the first 10 seconds and plant the bomb. Otherwise we're just right? That happens a lot. People get into that mindset. It might not be you, but it's something in general that I see a lot because I've coached a lot of students and this is the mindset that happens a lot of times, right? So we don't have to move that quick. And ultimately, if you think about it, who has the advantage of this round right now? If you were to look at economy alone, yeah so we have yeah, all the time in the world and they're the ones that are their backs against the wall financially right yep so i would say the biggest feedback i have for there slow down just half a second and think about what you want to do your original plan is great i love that but now you need to think about on the fly how do i modify things if i'm looking at this situation so here's what you're going to do now for homework you're going to start protocoling how you entry into this site okay so you might want to have about three different dash locations based on what you're playing against in terms of their comp or their comp and then based on what you think they're going to do if they play two on b my dash options are this and this if they play one on b my dash option is this okay if they play zero on b my dash option is this right <laughs> you need to be protocoling that in your head so you can make these on the fly decisions a little bit faster. Does that make sense? Yeah. 1v4. 1v4 situation? What do I do here? What do you do here? You just try to get as much damage done as you possibly can. Try to get the bomb down. Try to salvage as much okay, as you let's, can. Let's see what happens. The, um, the other thing that I want you to do too is check your money and see if it's worth doing it as well. Okay. Okay. This was a mistake, small mistake. When you're going for this 1v2 situation, I want you to look at what their alts are right away. Take half a second, take a look. If you're Sova and you're alting, I've already given you the answer. Where would you alt to prevent this plant and to kill you one time? Default, default. You got it. First of all, fake plant and then move over to dice and plant again. Or just plant on dice right at the beginning, either one. Probably pushing you in heaven in a few seconds here. Oh my goodness, what a throw. Okay, the last one's in the middle here. Pop dash. Okay, going for knives, I like it. You have option to updraft here too, which is great. Oh, I love it. Nice job. Excellent work. Okay, so 
things I would look at. Vin. What's that? Good job, Vin. Yeah, way to go, Vin. Excellent work. Is it is it V Y N or is it? It's Vinable. Vinable. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so what I would do is first of all, before I go for that clutch, I ask myself, is it worth doing? Right? You press tab really quick. You take a look at the money situation. What goes wrong if I lose this? Right? Is it better if I hold this up for next round? These are questions you want to ask yourself. Yes, man. Ooh, I'm the best in the world. Of course, if you don't do it, you won't get the clips. All right, so if we look at the money situation, you probably needed to save. Uh, he ended up buying. Okay, so 31, yeah, you definitely needed to save that round. <laughs> okay, because if you had lost, if you had lost, then we need to drop someone. It takes time to practice that kind of stuff. That was really good. So this right here, guys, again, you want to put the work in? I don't want to do this shit anymore, but <laughs> learning how to timing the jump to the land perfectly on the spot, that's that's important to do too. Okay, mm I'm fine with it. Just gonna nitpick here, but it's all right. So remember the op limits your ability to move. Good. Cool. So on the transverse, the other way to think about this is that smoke's probably not going to last much longer. What function do we serve with the op going in when we have a full team already in sight? Could we just wait here and wait the smoke out? Think about distance with your op. This is fine. You do just fine with it. Totally okay. You pop the dash, I believe, too. So I'm okay with it, but just consider that there's other options to doing this as well. Cloud burst. Yep. This is not going to go well. This is rough. And were we going to KJ ult? I'm so confused. That was the plan, right? I think Wait, what said. This is a load of f right here, isn't it? KJ ult, and then we solve ult their KJ ult. That's what they just said. Okay. So what the f is their KJ doing? <laughs> Our KJ is in outer space. KJ? Hello? Hello? Where are you going? Okay. Oh, you were gonna Wait, do it. What? Why you stop? Oh. Huh? <laughs> Why'd you stop? <laughs> KJ? Hello? No, KJ. Okay. That's a better dying. idea. Let's just die to tens. That's a good idea. I like that. All right. Team player. Never mind. KJ. Um, KJ is actually you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, we move on. Unlucky, I guess, right? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna nitpick this one. Uh, Tens kills you here, for sure, if he swings. Because of how you end up peeking it. I know you know this, right? My recommendation is when you're opping this, move forward, then to the right, instead of moving in a diagonal like that. You're sick. You're so good at aiming. But imagine you peek this with like gusto going in an L shape like that. You would just you'd clear this like faster for sure. And oh, yeah. You peek so much faster. Of my movement. Yeah. And you know he's doing this to you. Because he's yep. already trained himself like that. So he one taps this spot. In fact, I'm pretty sure because of how close you are to this wall, you're revealing yourself as you're walking up in a diagonal right now. So anyone who's on like close angle like this has already seen you at this point. What is your best way to improve aim? I always say improve aim through movement. And you can train aim labs all you want, right? But in reality, in fact, even in this game, we can see Vin is hitting a lot of his shots. Sure, there's some micro adjusting here and there when he's not quite on, but most of his stuff, he's moving into it. He moves into the fight and clears the fight. It's like my first time watching myself play ranked. You never actually watch your games back? No, I never. Bro. I usually, I usually like think in my head like, uh, what should I do better? Like right there. And that's cool. Like, I don't, I'm okay with that. But here's what I will say: you need to learn to save reflection for later. Reflection is a further point in the future. Here's why: if you reflect in the moment, a lot of times we get distracted by emotions, emo. Okay because we're emotionally invested in the results. 
right? Yeah. That might not be you, but there's a risk of that. Because sometimes you might be like losing like three or four games in a row and you start getting pissed off yourself and then you make a mistake and then you're like, man, you know, what can I blame for the reason why I died there? And it all comes from the emotion. So reflection is a very uh, scary thing. If you, can, you can like make small adjustments sort of thing. That's really fine. Have that quick little conversation. But this is something that you also want to tear uh, to bring into team play as well. Reflection should be for VOD review afterward. Now, the point I was going to make here was your reflection piece or your VOD reviewing, the way that I would do it, again, if I were competing, I would say three games is the maximum I'm gonna do. I might go five, depending on how I'm feeling. Five games would be the most I'd be playing in one day. And the way I would divvy out my time is I would be saving you know, a couple hours, maybe one to two hours for VOD review of all the games I played. I record all five of my games, and every single time I'm recording the game, I will write down notes. So instead of reflecting the moment, I'll say round number five of game number two. I need to look at this, this is what I think I did, and then I'd throw the book away, and then I'll go back into playing the game and focus on what I need to do there. This is so important. Every pro okay. looks back at their gameplay, like we're doing right now. They look back and they monitor all the mistakes they've made so they can start fixing things. If you're not going to apply and fix things, you're going to keep banging your head against a proverbial wall like this one right here until things just stick and this is going to be a very painful process. Can it work? Sure. But everyone who's worth a damn in this game is VOD reviewing themselves. Or they have someone, like a coach for example, looking over their stuff. No way you're challenging that. Come on, bro. <laughs> There's like four. <laughs> Inferno's in here? Holy shit. <laughs> How's it going, Inferno? One enemy remaining. Spike down A. Okay, so what was the thought process here? So my teammates are taking a fight. I was uh I threw a one-way there, so they had to swing like against the wall or they'll be stuck against the one-way and I get like a uh, advantage, like Peeker's advantage. Okay. Like, um, so basically I throw a one-way against the wall and they either go into the one-way like they're dead dead uh, or they go okay. and swing against the wall like they're Sova. Love that. And I have three three teammates fighting with me, so it's kind of an advantage for us. Uh, okay, love that, love that. Big W then. I learned something new today. Great job. <laughs> One enemy remaining. We're not We're not worthy. Worthy. So the plan there was to fake the dash, or was that an, oh, was that a mistake? No, oh, I wanted to. I knew, like, I don't know, but like my game sense, I kind of know he's hell for some reason, and I wanted yeah, to no, dash I top gen. I wanted to do dash top gen. And I have no clue what's going on with my dash. Yeah, okay, so I think you end up hitting the edge of something here. Yeah. Let's see. Get the edge. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> this happens to me sometimes when I play Jets. It's like, fuck. It's like that one little thing. <laughs> Do you know the spam spots for every single corner? Before, like, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, so you know where all the headshot angles are? Yeah, I do, I do, I spam? do. Okay, that's important. Uh, another one, guys, just in case, make sure that you start learning these things. Grab a friend, go into a server, and just learn where the spots are relative. Find a standing spot where you like to go and just go for the spams and see if you can clear things out. If you have KO, which again is a very essential pick on this map, KO can literally take out one of these angles and leave closet and take out sloth completely, right? Um, lots of different options there. How uh, how many hours of aim labs do you do? I mean, it's three, right? Me? Usually, yeah. Have you played aim labs at all? I play like aim labs like once every like two to three days. I and love I, and I that play answer. For, like, <laughs> huh? I love that answer, man. You do? I thought, oh yeah, I do. Because I, think I'm personally of the feeling that aim labs is very, very overrated, and I'm probably ruining a potential sponsor by saying this, but I think it's overrated. <laughs> so hearing only once like every three days is like music to my ears. And why do you why do you play it? To warm, like get my muscle memory, like go in, practice my micro management, and like just get in touch with my mouse, like just just become the mouse. 
Why isn't it an everyday occurrence though? Like, why once every like three days? Uh, because I don't know. I just I don't like doing it often. Like, uh, I just get burnt out on it, and it doesn't like fully go into Valorant. Like, I it's best to just go into range, practice like the actual gun, and then go into TDM and and practice your movement while practicing your spray pattern and I, I don't know it's just better to play the actual game rather than warming up only in aim or in aim labs where you can't control your recoil okay love that yeah it's unfortunate unlucky reina i typed it perfectly one hundred one yep. million great shot By the way, chat, I, I got a, a kill on Cat and I repositioned top mid where there's no smokes. Yes, great point. And here's the next point I wanted to make on that. Why not take a shot through here and just go for it? Huh? Why not take a shot right now and go for it? Uh, Because I, I didn't show that I repositioned top mid. Yep, you didn't, you didn't show that. So here's what he's saying. He gets a kill on Cat so automatically they're thinking that he's going to be on catwalk if you reposition as an op they don't know you're going to be here which is great but you can also take an op shot here if you wanted to and what this will do is it will now make them think that you're in middle which is great for you you take the shot here because they think they might be in fridge it's a possibility you can kill them there if they're not there you can then reposition again and now they're thinking you in mid and this helps solidify this piece of utility here which locks down mid even more so now you can re reposition over to B and hold that angle. And then they're going to think ops over in middle now, top middle. We can't challenge the space. That reinforces this spot and you can stack everyone else towards A. That's what I'm thinking. Like, That's my next level. Ready and lobby, or like most of the time in ranks, they just yeah. don't overthink like that. They just, like even if they know I have an op, they're just going to swing me. Like, <sighs> God, that's so depressing to hear. I know, I know. But like... <laughs> You're correct if it was in a team setting, yes. But yeah. in ranked, people just swing. And that is my problem. I play way too much team. Or I did play way too much Look, team. I repositioned B towards B, like you said. Yep. So before you leave, I want you taking an op shot towards mid, just because some of them might think like that and think that you're over yeah. in mid. And then you have a free one, right? Another nice kill. Poor tens. Or tens, back up, man. back right up to, to I would back right up to Boathouse right now because I think your teammates are a little bit distanced from you right now. They are. Nice shot. Never mind, you're him. Okay, so I wasn't sure where the Sova was and where the Reina was exactly. I think the Reina was coming down catwalk at that point. So I was just thinking about timing. How could we survive a little bit longer on the site? So I'm cool with what you did because Sova was close enough. I'm kind of nice, Love it. All right. Vin, thank you so much for joining us today. 